Fang. It's probably just Mrs. Bryerson's poodle. What kind of a vampire sidekick are you? What a scaredy cat. Ooh! Good job, Fang. You're cured. Uh, hello, Mrs. Bryerson. Your poodle was making a whole lot of noise last night. Kept us all up. What? Oh, no, no. That wasn't Blitzy. He disappeared three days ago. I can't find him anywhere. I've looked all over town. Disappeared? I'm sorry to hear that. If I see him, I'll let you know. Did you hear that, Fang? It all adds up. Blitzy vanishing, the blood-curdling howling. It can only mean one thing. A poodle spook. <laughs> Blitzy may be trying to communicate with us from beyond. We have to find out what he wants. Has your pet disappeared? It might be in another world trying to contact you. Call 555-LOST. I can almost feel the dog spirits calling me now. <laughs> Oh, my! Isn't this lucky? Mrs. Bryerson, I was expecting your call. Oh, that's incredible! Call it... Intuition. Amazing! Oops. What was that? Oh, just the spirits. They're making a jam sandwich. Oh, uh, could you please come over and help me contact my dearly departed dog? Just what I was thinking. We'll be right over. Um, aren't you a little young to be contacting the spirit world, dear? I think you'll find I'm wise beyond my years. This was Blitzy's room. I've kept everything just the way he liked it. <laughs> Egg beater, ectoplasmic frother, fish ball, crystal ball. Oh, juice. What's the juice for? Drinking. The spirit world makes my throat dry. Follow my lead. Everybody hold hands. Uh, uh. Here, boy. Who's a good boy? Come on. The kink in my neck is gone. That's Blitzy's way of telling you something. What? What? I can't see. Only the chosen can see. Blitzy is in the netherworld. Huh? Trapped in the astral prison. In what? He's been incarcerated in the ether pound. Oh! It's a spirit kennel where they keep the souls of captured dogs. Oh, dear, dear, dear. But how did he get there? We were in the backyard, gardening. He was taken there by... Well, what have we here? The evil phantom dog catcher. He roams the real world at night, collecting doggy souls for his astral dog pound. <laughs> oh, well, what about cats? He's allergic. Only dogs for this phantom. Don't you worry. I'll spend every waking moment trying to free Blitzy's tormented spirit from the clutches of the evil phantom dog catcher. Mona, Lily, lunchtime. Right after lunch, that is. Ooh, I am feeling kind of hungry. <sighs> How are we going to free Blitzy? I've never been to the netherworld before. Neither have I, but I'm sure it's on the bus route. Hmm. Now, if we had a dog to use as bait, we could trick the phantom dog catcher into leading us right to the Aether Pound. But we don't know any dogs. What do you think? A little 
Elmar Moose. Wait a second. Perfect. He's coming! Now remember, Fang, if you go through with this, I'll give you a whole can of sardines. Now that is the ugliest dog I've ever seen. Wow. Must be one of them rare breeds. Come here, boy. <laughs> got moves like a cat. Gotcha! <laughs> Netherworld, here we come. And that's it, keep moving. How insidiously clever. This ordinary kennel is the gateway to the astral dog prison. Let's go rescue Blitzy and Fang. Look at them all, ready to be shipped to the astral plane. How? Through that. A vending machine? No, next to it. Follow me! Just don't let go of the hose! begin a new collection. of your power. <laughs> Mona, the gateway is closing! <laughs> now you'll be trapped here forever! Everybody out! Wait! No! <laughs> Show up yet, Mrs. Bryerson? 
Uh, no, sweetie. He hasn't come home. That's strange. We freed all the dog souls from the astral kennel. At least you tried. Let's see. Where have you been? Out with a friend, I see. Oh, my. There's no telling what can happen when you cross the astral plane. It seems Blitzy met his soulmate. So, what did you do today, Mona? Oh, nothing special. Constructing an ant farm for the science fair. Actually, the ants are constructing it. I'm supervising. Did you know ants think in unison? It's just like they're telepathic. And over here, George has a mold project in assorted petri dishes. I discovered all these molds in my bachelor uncle's fridge. Look, the one that looks like saliva pulsates. <laughs> Thank you, George. I'm growing beans and talking about photosynthesis. Thank you, Lily. I have a poem to go with each butterfly. Very nice butterfly project, Lawrence. And this is Angela's project. Oh, welcome, Principal Shabley. I hope Miss Gatto didn't bore you too badly with all those other projects. Now, what I have here is a huge mechanized remote control model of this solar system. <laughs> That's Dave. My dad hired him to tighten the bolts for me. You will notice that I have chosen to put the Earth in the center of the solar system. Well, this is because I live on Earth. And without me, it's hard to imagine. Hey! I'm attempting to extricate dinosaur DNA from Jurassic-era crystallized amber tree sap I ordered from the back of the Von Creepsilla comic book. Then, I'll deposit it into my life-size paper mache Frankensteinosaurus Rex. Everyone knows Frankensteinosauruses never really existed. They will exist as soon as I get the right chemical enzymes in its brain cavity. My very own Frankensteinosaurus Rex. <laughs> didn't have very big brains, but this Frankensteinosaurus Rex sure will. You're going to wish you had a bigger brain, Mona, when you lose the science fair tomorrow. There, dinosaur DNA, spliced with haggis enzymes and the primordial ooze inserted into the cranium. According to the recipe in this comic book, after stirring gently, let's sit overnight. And by tomorrow, I'll have my very own Frankensteinosaurus Rex. Good work, young scientists. Remember, the judging of the science fair will take place tomorrow afternoon, right after the Our Town Parade. Principal Shabley, the Great Sixers want to show you their uh, Titanic project in the drama room. <laughs> you better hurry. Well, Shabley, I'm not done showing you my project. <sighs> hmm. George. I've got a little plan, just to make sure Mona's monstrosity doesn't win first prize. Okay, tell me all about it. Good night, honey. Good luck in the science fair tomorrow. Good night, Dad. And to think... As we lie here, my Frankensteinosaurus Rex's brain is starting to awaken 100 million years after the last dinosaurs. Can't you think of anything other than yourself? Huh. 
Where are we gonna hide this thing? I know just the place. Come on! This is where they're storing the floats for tomorrow's Our Town Parade. Mission accomplished. Let's go! Let's go up that ladder and crawl out the window. Oh, it's locked. Oh, oh. oh. This is all your fault. You, Mona, and her stupid Frankenstein dinosaurs. Your Frankenstein dinosaurus. It's gone. Do you know what this means? Someone stole it. No, it means its brain was activated by the primordial ooze. It's alive. And out there somewhere, looking for its mommy. Me. Has anyone seen Angela and George? They weren't in homeroom this morning. No, Miss Gatto. I think your Frankensteinosaurus was stolen. Guys, yesterday I saw George and Angela looking at your project and whispering. They shouldn't tamper with a Frankensteinosaurus Rex. then made a break for it. Yeah, that's one theory. Another theory could be that a float started rolling, broke through the door, and uh, rolled away. Oh, of course, the cover-up. You know, the whole town would panic if they knew a misunderstood Frankensteinosaurus was on a bloodthirsty rampage. Your secret safe, officer. I don't want to cause an international panic any more than you do. We've got to find him, and fast! If he gets frightened, this whole town could be destroyed! Come on! The thing is huge! Where could it be hiding? Frankensteinosauruses may be big, but they're notoriously good hiders. My vampire senses are tingling, but still, no sign of the Frankensteinosaurus. We just have to find him before they do. There's no telling what could happen. Now I know how my mom feels when I come home late for supper. Hey, it's almost time for the Our Town Parade. Of course! Where else would he be hiding? Let's go! Where'd you find it? Down by the lake early this morning. Must have rolled down from the warehouse. I'm hauling it back into town. Hope I'm not too late for the parade. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What happened to the parade? Uh, it went that way. Hey, there he is! Here, boys. Come on. Come to Mama. See, you have to be firm 
but gentle when you're dealing with a creature that has superhuman strength. It could have squashed you. Oh, no. My Frankensteinosaurus would never do that. I'm its creator. But I admit, if I wasn't, it probably would have eaten me. Like it ate Angela and George. Come on, son. It's just a load of paper mache. It's not alive. It couldn't eat anyone. Help! Help! Good thing he didn't chew when he swallowed them. <laughs> and it's also a good thing I didn't get around to putting in that digestive system. I'm going to sue you, Miss Vampire! Well, if the Frankensteinosaurus didn't eat them, then how did they end up in his stomach? We were at the top of the ladder when it came rolling towards us. We fell into its mouth and... Sure you did, George. Of course they did. All nice and dandy, Officer Hallcroft. But a little too tidy. If everything you say is true, and the Frankensteinosaurus was rolling around on an out-of-control gurney... Yes? Then how do you explain this? <gasps> A giant foot 